You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Now, those words might be familiar to you and you might have heard them in your favorite series or movies in arrest scenes. Now, you might hear them being said by law enforcement officers and you might think that this is just some part of a script whenever someone is going to perform an arrest. But actually, it carries more weight than you think. This is Konya Criminology and for today, we are going to talk about the Miranda Rights. So the Miranda Rights actually has a very interesting history. So on June 13, 1966, the US Supreme Court has finally made a decision during the case of Miranda versus Arizona to establish the principle that all criminal suspects must be informed or advised of their rights. Now, if you want to know what happened in Miranda versus Arizona, basically, Ernesto Miranda was arrested for stealing money from a bank worker. Now, after two hours of questioning by the cops, he did not only confess to the robbery, but also of kidnapping and rape. Miranda admitted or confessed all of that without knowing that anything that he said will be used against him whatsoever. Now, the text that I have read to you earlier is actually part of what we call the Miranda Warning. And it is recited to a person being arrested. And yes, it happens in real life, of course. Uh, the purpose of the Miranda Warning is to basically have the person being arrested informed or advised of their rights. It's as simple as that. But this very action actually has so much significance in every arrest as it reminds us what our rights are during uh, a time that they are suspended. First of all, you must know that the Miranda rights are only applied or advice to those who are being arrested. This is not something that the police reads to everyone that they interview. In fact, it only applies to those who can say something that might incriminate themselves as a suspect. Which explains the second line of the warning. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. So let's digest the other lines, shall we? So first, we have, you have the right to remain silent. This explains that you have the right to not say anything when you are being questioned without the presence of your lawyer. No matter what the police wants to know from you, you have the right not to say anything at all. Next, like I have mentioned earlier, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Others actually consider say and do as actions during an arrest can be used in the case to incriminate a person. This line focuses on how you, as a person being arrested and deprived of liberty, at the moment is put under a microscope where your words and actions are being observed and taken into account as they may be used as evidence further on the case. Next, we have you have the right to an attorney. This line simply means that you have the right to your own counsel. As the justice system promotes equality for both the suspect and the victim, you have the right to have the proper people to defend you. You also have the choice to pick your own lawyer. However, uh, we have the last line which is if you can't afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Think of this as an extension of the previous line. It simply means that if you cannot afford your own lawyer, you will be provided one by the state. Now, the last part of the Miranda warning is the waiver, which is do you understand the rights that I just read to you? Or do you understand each of these rights? And then, understanding them, do you wish to speak to me? So this second part of the warning is a waiver stating that after just being informed of your rights, do you wish to speak knowing whatever you can say can and will be used against you. This waiver basically states the intentions of the police as whatever answer they ask for, they will be, they will put into account whatever you answer. So the Miranda rights are very important when performing an arrest as it is required by the law. Not reciting these rights to the person being arrested can actually cause charges to be dropped and cases to be dismissed as it can be seen as an illegal act during an arrest. So like I have mentioned early in the video, the Miranda rights actually carry a lot of weight. So when you forget to announce the Miranda rights during an arrest, it can actually be used as grounds for dismissal. So imagine, even if you are arresting a guilty person, if you forgot to recite the Miranda rights, you already have given them 
uh, weight to bring down the case. So that is basically everything that you need to know about the Mirandi rights on the surface level. I hope that I have made you understand a little bit of the history and the reason as to why the Mirandi rights are something necessary to be discussed during an arrest. So again, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. And if you want to give some suggestions, go ahead and leave in the comment section down below. So that is all. Uh, lastly, of course, don't forget to hydrate and sanitize. Bye, guys! Peace.